In all my years tending the baths, I've never known anything like this to happen. Please. Tis stoneware. Fresh bread, warm from the oven. It would make a fine gift for your bride. She'll look at you and... I'll be asking for you again, my sweet. It's all the fault of this blood. Sid War. The moment I can kill for a measly. Much of this old dream. If you can't even fill my cup, you'll know you. Ha! They've opened the gate. Lubor was true to his word. You're a friend of Lubor's, aren't you? Everyone's getting their crystals now, if that's what you're worried about. So, let's leave it there, shall we? No sense making a mountain out of a molehill. Not now the vermin are gone. What do you want? Directions? Either take this road to the Fang, or piss off back the way you came. Are you looking for something in particular? An excellent choice. Here you are. Fare you well. What is it? Me no move for chatter. Sorry. Do you mind if I ask your trade? Hunter, why? I have a question. Can you tell me what makes a good carving knife? I assume you use one out in the field. Oh. Um. Has to be able to put up with some punishment. Don't be dealing with a brittle blade, not while I'm on the hunt. If your knife snaps every time you use it, you'll be spending coin as fast as you make it. Times are hard enough as it is. Thank you. I won't keep you any longer. All business, eh? Man after my own heart. So, a carving knife should be hard wearing and hold an edge. Hardly a revelation. Let's hope Sava had better luck than I did. Oh, we can make our way back to the forest. Plates and pots! Bows and Needed to a silken soft. The most fragrant herbs the and The finest spots. fabrics! Fresh from the... So, how'd it go? You learn anything useful, or should I be looking for a new trade? Only that a blade should be durable and stay sharp. But I don't see how that relates to the spirit of Dalamil. <sighs> I didn't have much luck either. All the cook said was that he needs his knives to be light. Too heavy, and they do his shoulder in. So we're no better off than when we started. Perhaps Lubor didn't mean anything with his Dalamil remark. But that can't be right. I've bandied enough words with the man to know that he chooses them carefully. No. We must be missing something. Something right in front of our noses, most likely. No doubt you're right, but I have to make a start soon. I can't put off making this knife forever. Agreed. Luba wouldn't like that much. Right. I've been trained to work iron. The cheap stuff, mind. But it's hardy enough if you don't hammer it too thin, and it sharpens up nicely with a bit of effort. Trouble is, it's either durable or it's light. Meaning someone is going to be disappointed. Forge Master Lubor, probably. Is there no one else you can turn to? Someone who knows their metals, perhaps? Eh. The other apprentice is no better than to help me with my test. But... Maybe there is someone I could turn to. A merchant. A favorite of Forge Master Lubor's who sells metals to tradesmen passing through the Valkroy. 
I bet she'd know a thing or two. Stray home now. Any luck? Or will you be needing help with your bags? Well, I asked her, but... Oh, you tell him. If you're looking to make a knife that will impress a master like Lubor, there are options. They're just not that viable. Featherlight adamantite knives will get passed from generation to generation never needing so much as a lick of the whetstone. But adamantite ore is unique to ash, so it doesn't come cheap. And it's beyond my skill to handle. Unique to ash? Are there any materials unique to Dalamil? Something which could be mixed with iron to refine it, make it lighter. What are you getting at? You said that Lubor trained you to work iron. And that's what he'll expect you to use. But he would have known that it would either be too heavy or too brittle for a carving knife. Perhaps his Dalamil remark wasn't a riddle, but a hint. If it's cheap metal you're using, then there's always limestone, I suppose. Folk first settled Dalamil to get it in mineral deposits. And if you know the trick, it can be melted down in the furnace to drive out impurities from low quality iron. Bloody hell! That must be it! I don't suppose you know the trick, do you? It's hardly my speciality, but I've been around enough blacksmiths to know how it works. Looks like I've got some learning to do. Clive, I, uh, I hate to ask after all that you've done for me, but... Limestone? Fine. I can hardly abandon you now. Besides... I want to know if this is the answer to Lubor's little riddle. I can't thank you enough, Clive. You'll have no trouble finding limestone over in the terraces. The place is bloody made of it! Then I suppose I'll meet you back at the forge. Right you are. I'll see you shortly. So, do you crush it up, or just throw it in the furnace? Good girl. Faster! I'm hearing. Fresh bread, warm from the oven. Silver platters, hanging lanterns, kick the doctors from your door. Well, we can make our way back to the fang now. We should get going soon. Do you have water? Ah. I'm not too late. 
What is it, Lubo? A question that I neglected to ask earlier. Where is it that you're bound? To Drake's Fang. To finish Hugo Kupka. Ha, <sighs> just as I thought. Then allow me to share a secret. Drake's Fang is currently riddled with royalists. Telmeki and Walud are allies, and as you have seen, their soldiers work hand in glove. But no nation has ever before allowed a foreign army to make a barracks of its holiest of holies. Not by choice, at least. And there's more. A man on the inside of the Fang has failed to report for several days. I fear there may be more trouble lying in wait for you on the road ahead. <laughs> Isn't there always? If you're determined to beard the lion's den, then promise me one thing. That you will enter via the mines, where the guard is lightest. I've lost one Sid already. If I lose another, people will start to think me careless. I don't plan on dying. Not before Kupka does, anyway. Well, so long as you have a plan. Drake's Fang should be just beyond these springs. Shall we press on? open now. We can press on. Don't tell me you put down roots. Seven needs. We should get going soon. Do you have water? Stoutest stoneware. Needed to a circle. Take a sniff, good sir. My carpets have brighter places. I wasn't sure how much you'd need, but I hope this is enough. You are one of the good ones, you know that. You and that merchant both, she's got quite a gift for teaching that one. Now, time to see if limestone is the secret weapon we were hoping for. <sighs> That'll do, I reckon. A knife forged from the very rocks of Dalamil. Her spirit, if you will. It's a fine-looking blade. I only hope Master Lubor agrees. That sounds like my cue. And just as well. I was getting tired of waiting. I'm, I'm sorry, Forge Master Lubor. Let's take a look then, shall we? First things first, Sava, do you think this is a carving knife worthy of the fine people of Dalamil? I... I'd like to think so. Uh... But, but what do you think? What do I think indeed? It's sharp-ish, but it won't last long with hard use. And it's heavy, heavier than it should be. You might not think it just to hold it for a moment, but sell that to a cook and you'll never hear the end of it. It looks like someone paid a visit to the terraces. The limestone was a step in the right direction, granted, but... One that still leaves you short of the mark. And I was so certain I had it all worked out. I don't know who you found to teach you that little trick, but it certainly shows initiative. Next question. How much do you think I would charge if I'd made this? Well, 
if it took you even a fraction of the time it took me, I would say you could demand a heavy purse. And who would be able to pay that? Hmm? The butcher? The hunter? The cooks over at the inn? Dalamil is home to humble traders, not wealthy lords and ladies. Rule number one in any business, Saver, know your customers. Yes, Forge Master. This is just about passable. But only just. I'd say you're worth keeping around a little longer. Starting tomorrow, you'll have an anvil of your own. I will. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was wondering, uh, what would you do if you were asked to forge a carving knife? I'd do what I always do. Ask who it's for. If it was for the butcher, I'd make sure it holds an edge. For the hunter, I'd make it as tough as Titan. For the cook, light as a feather. And for the nobleman, I'd make it cost an absolute fortune. There goes a master, all right. It looks like congratulations are in order. I couldn't have done it without you. So much for the Forge Master's riddle, though, eh? <laughs> The spirit of Dalamil had nothing to do with limestone or anything much at all. Meaning, I had you run around for no good reason. You've passed your test. That's all that matters. You'll have a forge of your own in no time. And when I do, I'll craft you the finest carving knife you have ever seen. don't think I could have done it without all your help. I hear you and the Master are working together now. Glad to have you on board. What is it now? Best of luck. Come on, girl, the gate's open now. I do. Trader, are you? Seeking your fortune down in the golden sands of Dalamil? From mercantile stock myself, as happens. You'd never guess. I was born just down the road in Dravosht. And like me old ma and pa, I've been wandering the world, hunting Gilbard's blessing ever since. Reckon I might have found it, too. You've heard about the famous healing waters they got round these parts, right? Well, I'm thinking if I can find a little pool on the end, dress it up a bit, 
lay on drinks and fancies and whatnot, I'd have a license to mint gill. Soothing your aches and pains with a grape in your gob and a glass in your hand. There's nothing people wouldn't pay. Broken down, you say? From the weight of its load? Aye. The guards are furious about it. You do well to steer clear. Well, if it's blocking the road, it'd be a wasted journey anyway. Get that damned wagon fixed! Unless you'd rather our men in Dalamil starved. The axle's gone, Captain. There's nothing I can do. Something awful's taken up residence in the springs. We'll turn back if you know what's good for you. the heat. enough to keep the baths from boiling.
I saw with my own two eyes what you did to those devils down there. And I still hardly believe it. We should get going soon. There he is. The man who saved my bit. I was hoping we'd be seeing you again. The baths grow more bearable by the moment. It won't be long now before we are back to business as usual. I'm glad to hear it. Now, tell me this. What did you find at the terraces? What threatened to make me a pauper? Not what I expected, that's for certain. You tell a fine story. That's not to say I don't believe you, though. Creatures made of flame, eh? That's something new to worry about. But I burdened you with my worries enough already. Here, a small something by way of thanks. Right, it's high time I got back to work. With a little luck, the day might yet be salvaged. Just as well I sent you to the terraces in my stead. It sounds like I'd have been burnt to a crisp. This town is truly blessed. The bustling markets, the healing waters, and all under the watchful eye of Lord Kupka, who stands ready to crush any threat that might face us. The, um, scrubbing is almost finished. We appreciate your patience. Hanging lanterns, keep it up! Finally, we'll be able to get this. Come on, girl, the gate's open now.
There it is. Drake's Fang. Cuckoo will be hiding inside. Along with goodness knows how many guards, all on highest alert, you'll need to keep your wits about you if you're to reach him. So be careful. I will, uncle. Before you go, Clive, allow me to apologize. After what befell at Phoenix Gate and the crisis that followed in its wake, I fled. I retreated to my counting house and danced attendance upon the Vicerine in the hope it would bring me favor. I betrayed my nation to save my skin, like the coward I am. And I'm sorry. Uncle, please. It's not too late, Clive. Rosaria is yours by right, and there are those that would help you to take it back. Had I the courage of my brother, I might already have done so. But that ship has sailed. You, however... No. Forgive me, but I cannot. I fight to build a new world now. A better world. Where men can live and die on their own terms. I was raised in a nation that strove to improve the plight of bearers. Only later did I realize that spark of freedom did not arise by chance, but was kindled by my father. You would see me follow in his footsteps. And that is exactly what I mean to do. Not by ruling Rosaria, but by extending his ideals to the whole of the twins. Though every soul in the realm may judge my actions heresy, I am certain my cause is just. You really are just like him, you know? Thank you, Clive, for coming back to me. I am proud to call you nephew. Well then, this is where we must part ways. Wish me luck in convincing my Canvarian friend to share his considerable talents. I mean to plunder his coffers and prove myself worthy of a place in your merry band. <laughs> Till then, my boy. Till then. Go safely, uncle. And you, nephew. We have much to catch up on, you and I. I should expect you to regale me with the tales of all your adventures when next we meet. <laughs> you can regale me too, Torgal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming for you, Kuka.
It's back to Well, don't just stand there gawping. Going purse weighing you down. I'm be thankful you got that much. I reckon I can find a buyer. You got out else? I'm be thankful you got that much. Finished, are you? Be careful crossing the Velcroy. It's dead easy to get lost in the desert. <laughs> I should know. Scratches, right?
Sid's going to find Cooker and finish them. The little ones have been up to their old tricks again. Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. Your benefactors are a generous lot. Sorry, but you're not quite there yet. All in good time, eh? Hasn't been delivered yet, I'm afraid. Again, I may have more for you. And how may I assist you today? What is it that you wish to learn? Here's the latest information I have. <laughs> 